Hello and welcome to The Random Bros. This is my workshop, or should I say, this was my workshop. As you can see, it's not convenient at all. I basically have exposed electronics everywhere. It's difficult to study in front of the PC because there is not enough space. I cannot comfortably assemble any project. And I also cannot use my solder iron properly because expensive electronics. And most importantly, I have exposed battery leads at all time. I know it's not safe to do it, but it's better to have them in my eyesight instead of somewhere else. Oh, and one more thing. As funny as it sounds, with this setup, I have to enter and exit the room in a secret combination that only I can know. I guess no thief is getting in and living unscathed in this apartment. So, the goal of today's video is to build a workbench with less than 50 euros that I will be able to do everything without worrying about destroying something like this huge screen or those speakers and things like that. But before we start, I want to thank everybody that helped us reach 2k subs. It really keeps us motivated to see the channel grow day by day. So I am kindly asking you, if you are not a subscriber, smash that sub button, let's grow bigger, let's become better. This is the design we came up with. Those are basically the cheapest kind of wood we could possibly find. All of them, including bolts, 90 degree angle brackets and drill bit, cost $35. The kind of wood we chose is cheap, but it tends to suck when load is applied perpendicular to it. So, I came up with those two brackets. The one side will be mounted on the wall and it will give an angle to the wood while keeping it in place at the same time. The other side will be glued to the wooden surface of the bench and should be able to limit the load on the central part of the bench. I intentionally made it a bit bigger to let the wood take its natural position. Huge lie, it's a design flaw that turned out beneficial, so I didn't change it. After that, it was time to assemble everything. The installation went pretty much as planned. Luckily the prints didn't break when they were getting screwed on the wall, no pun intended. And everything went as planned. And just so you know, the parts were an average of 7 hours without supports and I needed 12 of them. That means... Um, many hours of print time. Also, I forgot to mention that the reason we decided to attach some legs vertically and some others on an angle was to have more free space to move around with less chances of hitting the legs. Also, we weren't sure if the angled solution was a good one, so we mixed both ideas. And then we reinforced the vertical legs with more 3D printed parts to make them as durable as possible. So it's day two. I finished with all the assembly and now all that's left to do is clean all the mess that I did with the silicone and then print some other extra things that I want to do to cover some imperfections that I did with the build. I intentionally haven't done the last leg yet, just to show you how bad it wobbles. Look at this. But the one with the 3D printed part... It's not moving at all. So I am hoping that I did a good job. After finishing all the reinforcement things, I had to check if the whole thing is stable to hold everything without collapsing. And I think it passes the test. We did it. We built a workbench that is really big, I can do all my projects and study comfortably, and I even have some money left. Now, let's finally move everything from my previous setup and see how everything looks like.
The point I'm trying to pass here is not to show you how to put the screws together and build the thing. I mean, this whole build costs $35, it's a 3.10 meters workbench and I will probably just need half of it. Oh, and one more thing, if you made it this far, make sure to tell me whether you like the video or not. I mean, I see videos getting pounded with likes or dislikes and nobody comments on what they liked or what they didn't like. I mean, I don't bite. If you don't tell me what you don't like or like, I will never fix it. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but look at this. We finally got our own coasters for our glasses. No more dripping water in the wood.